Hey what's up, hello, welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel if you're new here my name is Emma and if you're not new here then my name is still Emma. Today I'm going to be giving you guys some study tips because if you're from New Zealand or maybe Australia, I don't know what they do over there, but we're in exam season at the moment so whether you're, I don't know, it kind of applies to everyone that's in like intermediate or high school, but particularly year 11, 12 and 13 so I am a year 13 at the moment so I've actually finished like classes and stuff so I'm actually on study leave and I should be studying right now. I haven't started studying yet so... Here are studying tips from someone who hasn't started studying yet. So I guess to add a little bit of relevance to this, I'm not as dumb as I look. I've got excellence endorsement in year 11 and year 12, and I am I could get it in level 3, but I really need a pull finger for these exams and actually start studying, so yeah, that's that. So I guess like I, I'm going to call these environmental factors for your studying. So these are kind of like things that... You need to have around you to make this as easy as possible for yourself pretty much. First thing I've got here is yellow paper. I I don't know how true this is, but I've heard writing your notes or keywords or things you want to remember on yellow paper helps you memorize it. I mean, I don't know, just an idea if you want to give it a go, there's your chance. Don't listen to music while you study. I know that it might be tempting, but I mean, you can't concentrate when you listen to music. And when you go into the exam, there's not going to be any music playing. It's literally silent and it's kind of awkward at times but that's that. The next thing is something that's pretty big is put your phone on do not disturb flight mode or simply just turn it off or like chuck it on the other side of the room or whatever. So my desk is, is there where I do my study you can't see it but it's there and when I'm studying I either put my phone on my bedside table here or my bed so that it's not within arm's reach because I know if I pick up my phone I'm going to end up scrolling through Instagram or Facebook or probably TikTok and wasting a solid half hour. Make sure you stay hydrated so when you're studying keep a drink bottle nearby and another thing is to have some snacks so I find say in the afternoon I'm studying like between lunch and dinner I'll just have like a, I don't know like a little bowl of like nuts or whatever next to me so if I'm getting hungry I just like you know get some or if I'm reading like a book or something so I, like read like say to myself like, oh, I'll read two pages and I can have like a bite to eat or whatever take breaks so do 30 minutes to an hour of study and then have like a 10 or 15 minute break so I'm about to start studying after this so I'll probably do like 45 minutes and then have like a 10 minute break and just like you know I don't know fill up my drink bottle or whatever so this is something that is good for making the most of your study time because I mean, everyone's exams are different, so everyone's going to have different periods of time between their exams to actually focus on the one exam, like, solely. So, I found that a study planner, I've got this one here, which I got from Kiki K when I was, like, I think I was, like, year 10 when I got it, but I didn't start using it until NCA. But, anyway, so you can always make one of these yourself, but, I don't know, it has some inspirational stuff here. And then, hang on, I'll show you my one for this year. So it has like a monthly planner, but it's actually got like six weeks worth, which is six weeks, six weeks worth. There we go. Which is good. Um, I feel like a teacher holding it like this. I'm like, okay guys, time to read a book. Okay, anyway. So yeah, that's like, I put everything in here, like even like stuff like appointments and stuff. I put it all in here so that when I wake up in the morning, I'll be like, okay, this is what I've got on, on happening today. And then it breaks it down as well into like weeks. Each of these boxes are like a day. Today's Tuesday. So I had the super clinic appointment this morning. And then it has like a thing here we can write like your priorities. So today my priorities are study business because my business exam is on Friday. And then last night I actually came up with this. I'm kind of proud of it, not going to lie. But you can make this easy as my computer at home. But it's just like a massive, well not massive, it's an A4 sheet of paper so it's double sided. So it starts at 7 o'clock on this side and then the other side it goes to 11pm. And it's in 15 minute intervals. So each one is like a line and I write what I want to do in that every 15 minutes. But as you can see there are some blank spaces because I mean I'm at film video now so I've got like the whole afternoon to try and sort out what I'm doing. Like I need to like clean my car and stuff like that so that'll go somewhere in here. And then at the bottom I just had a little bit of a space so I did like my to-do list and at the top I left a space for the date on either side. Putting in the time I wake up and the time I go to sleep to make sure I'm getting adequate sleep because that is another very important thing. Make sure that you are getting enough sleep. I know you don't actually have school as such but when you're actually needing to function, like your brain needs to be working, it's important that you do get enough sleep to function. So when I'm on study leave, I think I did this last year too, I try and be in bed by 10 o'clock and then wake up at 7 o'clock. And once you get into that routine, it's not as hard as it sounds. So in terms of like actually studying and getting the content into your head, I find Learn Coach. I don't know if you guys have heard of Learn Coach. Some teachers promote it, some don't. But I find it very helpful. You can get a premium version of it, so I, I haven't done that. But I'll link Learn Coach down below anyway. But basically, if you just go into their website, and if you go find a subject, and then you can scroll down, and you can see 
like external things and they also have like a bit for internals if you need that but I think those bits cost money. They have like video tutorials so what I used to do which kind of links into another point that I've got here is rewriting your notes. So I wouldn't rewrite my actual notes because that's like a waste of time but I'd go into Learn Coach. So Learn Coach has all of the information they give you is stuff you should have learned in class. So I go in and watch the tutorials and I take notes as I watch the videos. So it's getting it into my head because I find writing it gets it into my head. I don't know if anyone else finds that. Most teachers tell you how to do this but some don't. And that is to access NCA. So you can access past papers for the standard that you're doing. So you can go in and see like the marking criteria and then you can go into the assessment reports and that gives you all the information that the markers found that people struggle with. So like the common things that people found difficult in the previous exams. So if you go into the NCQA website and down on the right hand side there's a little box that says NCA with a little green little heading and if you go into NCA subjects which is two down you'll see that it gives you a whole list of subjects. So say accounting for example. Click on accounting and then go down you can see exemplars of work and stuff otherwise if you scroll down in bold it says examination papers and exemplars and it has level one two and three so you click your level and you can see the past papers and they've got like resource books and stuff in there and you can print them off and that's really helpful and then you can also see assessment schedules so that's basically the marking criteria and then below that's assessment reports which is what people struggle with in the exams particularly for like equations and definitions I use flashcards I know that sounds so silly it makes you sound like you're like six years old but that's okay because it works I make like a little tiny little set of flashcards and I just test myself and I read the answers out loud rather than just in my head because when you read it out loud it is more effective so for accounting I had to learn some equations so I wrote like what the equation was for and then turn it over and write the equation in the back. So I test myself both ways. But make sure when you're writing on both sides that you do one side in one colour and the other side in the other colour so that you don't get them all mixed up. Practice questions are also a help, so not necessarily the ones on NZQA, but if you go into like libraries and stuff, you can get ESA study guides. Otherwise you can pick them up at Paper Plus. I think they're about $30, so probably not worth it at this time of the year. And then I guess it's practice questions from your teachers and stuff you've done throughout the year is always helpful as well. And if you need help, I cannot stress this enough. If you need help with something in one of your subjects and you don't know how to do it, don't just sit there being like, oh, I don't know how to do it. Oh, all good. I just won't worry about it because your teacher is there to teach you. So if you want to, flick them an email, go in and visit them in class. I don't know. I Whatever you can do or even ask your parents. Like I found in level one and stuff, especially my parents knew a lot of the stuff that I was struggling with. So I'd be like, hey. Or if you have older siblings, like my brother's two years ahead of me. So when I was in level one and I was struggling, I was like, hey, can you help me with this? And it takes like two seconds for someone to be like, oh, this is how you do it. And you're like, oh, yeah, okay. I didn't think of it like that. So definitely ask for help. So when you're actually in the proper exams as well, if you get stuck on a question, make sure that you move on from it and come back to it. And if you can't answer it, don't panic. Don't stress yourself out because I, in my stats mock exam or my derived grade exam, I didn't have enough time to finish the whole paper. And the last question, because I got stuck on it and I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. So that was a bit of an issue. But I didn't answer the question completely. I think I wrote down like a couple of things, but I ended up still getting excellence in that paper. So don't stress yourself out if you can't answer everything. It was the same thing with the first question in that paper as well. I spent like 20 minutes trying to answer it and it was worth like, only worth like an achieve mark. Those are all my study tips. Hopefully that will help you guys with your exams. Make sure that you study hard because you only get to do your exams once. So good luck for all your exams. Don't stress yourself out. It's not as scary as it seems. I know a lot of people like especially in like year 11s you guys are stressing and I know it can be scary but trust me it's literally like way more chill than you think it is. You only know what you know. Yes. So if... Sorry I wasn't talking to you. Go away. You only know what you know, so don't stress yourself out. But good luck for all your exams, make someone smile, and I'll catch you guys in the video next week. Driving and you cram it all into your brain, that doesn't make sense, but you know, you know what I mean. I was gonna say, I was gonna say something about in the exams.